What is up, guys? Welcome back to the second part of this weekend here in Paul Ricard. We're here for the sprint race. And we're after not an ideal feature race, I must say. Uh, we're looking pretty good. We're starting P2 here. But as you can see, it's overcast conditions, maybe a hint of rain if we're lucky. Um, we did do quite well in uh, you know practice sessions when it's been raining. And uh, obviously qualifying was um, wet to dry conditions for ourselves. So nonetheless, we'll have to see how we do. Nick DeVries there, sat there getting a little handshake from his uh, engineer. Um, Uni Virtuosi sat there with Guan Yu Zhou. Um, not having a great season. He's really struggling. He's one of the Kyles that I thought, you know, would be up there a little bit. Um, but we're not going to argue it. We're ahead of him. I'm sure the man, as we are going to see on the top right, you can see it's raining. It gets a bit heavier and it gets a bit lighter again towards the end of the race. So that's something we're going to have to keep an eye out for. Uh, DeVries obviously starting pole. We made him wait an incredible amount of time. And then would you look at that P3, Jordan King. This guy, and uh, we're like magnets, literally. There's not a single video where we haven't been next to each other on track, I don't think. Uh, Monaco might be the only exception. Um, I'm sure at some point we'll probably be battled, but it's just outrageous. Like, Jordan King is literally my kryptonite. But we're ready for the lights to go out here in the sprint race at Paul Ricard. We are underway straight away. Nick DeVries with an awful amount of wheel spin. Uh, we got off to a pretty decent stop, but Mick Schumacher shot off like an absolute rocket. He's, uh, the reason going to cover him into turn one. We've got King just behind us. Um, he's actually going to cause us a bit of trouble. And he's going to hit us round at turn two. And we're literally dropping like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> this dude. So we're now battling Ralph Boschung for P20. Great. He's actually going to dive it down our inside here. And he's actually going to hit us a little bit. So all the idiots have come out today. We're behind Ragunathan. And we're going to have a look at a replay of the start, in fact. And actually see how Mick got such a great start. He, he literally shot off like a rocket. And um, obviously those who are battling up ahead. Um, we're not quite side by side. So we're ahead at Jordan King at this point. And then yeah we just get nudged round. And then obviously you know we're sideways. We managed to recover it pretty well. Um, but yeah Mick just accelerated straight through our um, wheel spin. And he just absolutely shot off. I can't believe how good of a start our teammate got. Uh, in comparison to anyone on the grid. So you can see we're side by side here. Um, we do get ahead of him a little bit. And then obviously... Uh, it's, uh, I would love to blame him, but there's not much I can really say. Obviously, I turn in to make the corner. Um, he obviously turns in to make the corner. He's kind of sandwiched at this point. Um, uh, okay, I wouldn't say it's intentional. Uh, I'd hope not, at least, anyway. So we're going to have to fight our way back from P19. Um, we've got Ragunathan here going very slow. We're going to try and go around the outside of him, uh, make an absolute meal of uh, Ragunathan. Hubert just ahead, obviously having a really bad day. Ragunathan actually held that position, uh, which I was quite surprised at. I was uh, kind of expecting him just to just roll over and let me pass him. Uh, he put us in a bad position with Bosch on Hubert going for a move on Delatraz. Uh, Ragunathan obviously in the slipstream of Delatraz. We might dive it down the inside of um, Ragunathan. Maybe Delatraz, if we could follow Hubert through, that'd be a pretty sweet move. But Hubert and Delatraz look to be out of our reach here. And we're just going to have to deal and hold off for Gunnison. For Gunnison's actually coming back at us here. I have no idea what's going on, what he's eating for breakfast, but I'm not a fan of the slight. As Hubert and Delatra are still going side by side. As they go all the way side by side through turn 10, we actually end up going a little bit wide. We're going to take Delatra's round the outside here. And it looks like we're going to replicate the move on Mazepin on Hubert as well. So two for the price of one. Thank you very much. Those boys were battling. Uh, obviously compromised them quite a bit. Uh, Luca Gio has come up next. Two purple sectors here on lap two so we've got some pace in our car uh, very good on these hard compound tires i'm gonna go wide again there's a yellow flag uh giotto looking pretty vulnerable we're gonna go extremely wide here uh, maybe trying to get a bit of a switchback move on but uh, obviously with the yellow car subsequently uh, we don't want to make any moves there's a car to the right that's nicholas latifi um, a guy who eventually made it to F1 going incredibly slowly so he looks like he's going to retire from the race uh, that might potentially bring out a safety car which uh, probably will help us out maybe a little bit it is indeed safety car so we're going to have to slow down and uh, take it a little bit easy in comparison to uh, probably what he was doing before he was hunting everybody down trying to get back up to where we should have been but uh, we're going to fast forward you can see there's a few little rain droplets on the screen now so the rain has started to come in on lap four we've got quite a long way to go not even halfway through this race and i want to maybe look to put luca get on a bit of pressure try and get the ideal line similar to what we did with king we're going to put our foot down drop the back end a little bit nearly ended up in the pirelli sponsorship so hubert's going to have a fantastic run on us down into turn one we're going to take the inside line he's probably going to clear us before the braking zone 
but if we can maybe give him a little bit of a scare on the break-in, which we do indeed. He locks his front left tyre, so we're going to line him up for pass uh, coming through into, um, hopefully, into turn three. That's one way we can get past him. Uh, it's going to be pretty close into this corner. I'm going to stick our nose in, um, but he's just going to just drop it completely, and somehow he managed to keep it on the island. So, again, fast forward a little bit. We just don't have the pace um, for whatever reason. You know, we really struggle, uh, especially with warm-up, and obviously, you know, in these conditions, isn't going to help down the inside of Antoine Hubert. Um, Giotto still just about there. So we managed to make a good pass there on the Frenchman. And uh, now the Italian is up next. P15. Like, we're literally fighting for peanuts at this point. There's, there's, we're not fighting for points. Uh, DRS has been activated. I'm not sure if Giotto will have DRS. Yes, he does. So that's not going to make our life a little bit easier. Um, especially trying to get past Guan Yu Zhou. Up the gearbox of Giotto. He pushes us to the outside. No problem there. Go all the way around the outside here. Um, given plenty of space, especially on the inside. And now Guan Yu Zhou and Sete Camera are the next cars up. There's a yellow flag somewhere in this sector. And our teammate Mick is out of this race. You can see him just parked to the left there. So Mick Schumacher out of this race. And uh, we move up one position at least. I guess that's one thing we can be thankful for. Zhou looking a little bit vulnerable. We can't quite get past Camera at this point. So um, we might have to try a cheeky little lunge all the way down the inside from quite a way back. Uh, Managed to get the car slowed down. Um, it's definitely tricky. Uh, it's definitely getting really hard to control these cars. Everyone is in the same boat here. Obviously, being on the, you know, traditional dry compounds in these conditions, it's really tricky. And especially when we get to a point where the rain comes in quite a bit heavy. You can see cameras getting all kind of sideways on the power on the exit, and it gives us a great opportunity. We're almost side by side, uh, coming through the start finish line now. If we can maybe try and get a move done around the outside into turn one to help us, we can chase down Calderon. It's going to be so tight. So incredibly tight. Give him a bit of an unfair squeeze, to be fair to him. Um, he didn't cause us any issues, but we caused him some, uh, especially him trying to get a good exit of turn one. But Calderon is the next car. And uh, we've had a bit of a bit of a few, a few battles with Calderon. In fact, uh, Tatiana was the one who withheld us having any points in, um, <clears throat> I believe it was Spain, uh, where I got a time penalty and couldn't uh, make up the time difference to keep my one and only point plus the fastest lap. So I'm uh, going to make a point of getting past Calderon here. Uh, with a few laps to go, you can see the rain's intensifying quite a bit. And um, if it gets any worse, then for sure, uh, we're definitely going to have to think about... I don't think pitting's going to be the right option here, to be fair. But uh, definitely something we're going to have to look into, if we're not careful, is um, making sure that we slow down and try not to push the car too hard. Last thing we want is to end up in a wall like we almost did with the Pirelli ball. But Calderon did go pretty slow there, uh, so we're looking pretty good in terms of pace in that regard. But uh, nonetheless, Tatiana Calderon is definitely looking pretty, pretty vulnerable in these instances. You can see she's really slow through there. We go a little bit wide on the exit. Um, not that we haven't been doing that the entire race so far. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing the back of this French Grand Prix. Uh, we're struggling quite a bit. We close up massively to her uh, through the long sweep in turn 11. And uh, if you never know, if we can line her up correctly, uh, we can maybe get her into so close on the brakes there. Get her down into, uh, into turn one. That would probably be the ideal overtaking move. Um, that way we've got a pretty clean overtake and pretty clean run into turn one, turn two. And um, it's it's getting really, really tricky to uh, keep this car on. You can see she's going slow for the last corner. We're going to dive it down the inside. I'm going to get that move done. DRS has been disabled. Um, so that way, <laughs> I'm glad we got that move done. That way we ain't got to worry about any defense uh, from Calderon herself. Although she is coming back at us here. Coming down the start finish rate. She's going to pull to the right hand side. We're going to hold it down the middle. And uh, maybe give her a bit of a squeeze there. So that way she can't try and make an overtaking move. But we're on lap 11 here. And you can see, in the words of Arav, it's raining some biblical proportions. Because this is not okay on these tyres. Everyone's on dry. As you can see, we're sideways through that corner. We're going to miss our braking zone here. And uh, camera's actually going to get past us. So camera's not looking too good. You can see he's sideways there. He's going to overshoot. That's correct the car. He cuts across us. We're going to be side by side as we come through turn seven onto the back straight. We managed to get the position on camera, but as Joe's gone a bit sideways there as well. So everybody's struggling at the moment. He, camera's going to go for a move here. Tatiana Calderon looks like she's going to go for a move. We're three wide, almost four wide, coming into the uh, chicane, I guess you could call it. We managed to hold off uh, Calderon as well as camera. Um, we're obviously not going to catch up with the cars ahead, but we're sideways on the exit. We are struggling so much more, I think, than uh, the majority of these people. Calderon gets a great exit off of turn nine, so she's going to be well clear as we come into turn ten. And uh, camera looks like he might fancy a move, uh, but he backs out of it, luckily. 
uh, just keeping him behind. He's still got his nose in there as uh, we're still behind Caldor. And hopefully uh, we can maybe make a good move like we did before all the way around the outside. But she does pretty well to keep the car and uh, placement of her um, little pink BWT car. We go into the back of her a little bit. We're going to have to nudge her from the back. Um, just, just over speed is just crazy. We might have a little look down the inside here. We can't slow the car down. We're going to tap her. We're going to half spin, full lock through the polystyrene board of turn 12. There goes Calderon. There goes Sergio Sete camera. We're just ahead of Joe. And that was not a 100 IQ move, let's say. Uh, just couldn't slow the car down. It was way too wet through that corner. Nick DeVries actually wins his first race of the season. So well done to him. Uh, maybe if we can get a good exit, we might be able to challenge uh, Sete camera. But uh, I think at this point, our tyres are just cooked. We managed to barely get the power down. Uh, Joe looks like he would maybe like to overtake us. Coming to the line. We're sideways and he actually pips us to the line. Oh boy, that was rough. That was a really rough end to the race. Uh, P13 in the end. Lucky for some. Uh, not quite lucky for us, unfortunately. Um, yeah, we just got all kind of sideways. Calderon actually gets driver of the day. Um, yeah, we were just all over the road there at the exit. We were really struggling. Um, let's have a little look at a replay of this. This really made me laugh. So obviously camera was struggling, ends up switching over. You've got Joe in the background fighting with... Um, Calderon and then Joe gets a little bit sideways on the exit there almost lost it down the um down the back straight but that was that was an intense end to um a pretty good Grand Prix overall I really enjoyed that one with the uh, changing conditions Nick DeVries another race different race winner here in this F2 series on our way to Formula One but yeah it, it is it was incredibly difficult but nonetheless it was a very enjoyable grand prix and uh it's good to see the ai you know making some mistakes you know struggling and whatnot i tell you what nobuharu meshushita actually got a hat full of points um this weekend probably more than a majority of people to be fair jordan king on the podium great i'm in a bad mood now um yeah so it, it, it is what it is i mean in saying obviously that happened you know jack Aitken obviously got um, an abundance of points probably more so than uh, Matsushita but overall pretty solid weekend for those boys not a very good one for us to say the least you know we really didn't do as good as we probably should have but it is what it is it's a long championship we did get the fastest lap not that we're going to get any points for it um, yeah Jack Aitken you know two podiums pretty good for him He's now second in the championship, ahead of Mick Schumacher and Callum Eilert. Bockel actually not doing too bad. Jordan King, P7. We still have our lead in the constructors, which is good. But if you enjoyed this video, guys, please do slap a like on it. It helps me out massively. And if you're new around there, please do sub for more content. I'll see you in the next video.